Well, I took my first trip to Asia when I was very young in 1979 and really fell in love with the region. And I traveled to China in 1980. I was in Beijing for a whole day and only saw in five the, cars. In the 80s, yeah, all bicycles. 1980, <laughs> yes, so it was all bicycles. No one had any makeup, there was mm -hmm. no color, everything was gray yeah, and drab. Yeah. And this transformation in Asia has been something that I have tried to stay part of. Uh, I served in the U.S. government as the trade negotiator with Asia, deputy U.S. trade representative. And I was able to meet many countries and to understand their economy. And it's clear to me that the brilliance of Asia, which was lost for some few hundred years, but goes way back is just being tapped now in a way that is making the world a better place. And so I want to be part of that. I think it's the most exciting development of our time. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I plan to stay part of it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> I also think it's very dangerous. Um, if we look at human history, there's something called Thucydides' trap. And this is looking at the observation by the ancient philosopher Thucydides mm -hmm. yes. that when a new power challenges an old power, mm -hmm. it usually ends in war. And so Graham Allison at Harvard studied in the last 500 years, there's been 16 cases of a new power challenging an old power, mm -hmm. and 12 have ended in war. The most recent being? We have to, well, World War One and World War Two, with Germany and Russia rising in World War One, and and there's been others um, even in the past two hundred years, hundreds <coughs> of millions of lives lost. So the opportunity is enormous, and the dangers are enormous, and it requires leadership, and this is where even young people with all their brilliance and their ability with technology really need our leaders to step up to the plate and really need the United States to step into its leadership role. The U.S. has a long history in Asia, a deep relationship with many countries and can help to help guide the world through this. What, what role do you think, what's the ideal role for, um, for the U.S. to play then? Because the U.S. has played a, a major role um, mm -hmm. just in the last century in shaping how how um, how the continent um, developed. I guess right. a lot of a lot of countries, including of course the Philippines, right. were directly influenced by the U.S. Mm -hmm. What moving forward, I guess in the short and immediate term, what would what would be the ideal role in your opinion, at least? Well, Asia Society was founded sixty years ago by John mm -hmm. D. Rockefeller the third, and he got the idea in the rubble of World War II. He came to Asia his beloved Asia, mm -hmm. and he was quite critical of the American approach. And he said, Americans can't come to Asia and say, here's a shiny new car. This is your future. America has to come and say, we have some master mechanics, and so do you. Let us partner and tell us your dreams, and we want to help you get there. Mm -hmm. So when America is at its best, it's taking its global power and helping to make the dreams come true of the nations of the world, including the downtrodden. America was always about the underdog. Yeah, America was created American, by the underdogs. The American dream. And, yeah. and it was the reality. Mm -hmm. I mean, Americans were rejected by the kings and queens of the world and the riches of the world. Yeah. There isn't, there was an inherited- and hungry, right? Yeah. yeah, and it was. America yeah. isn't made of royal blood. Mm -hmm. It's made of the scoundrels the and the, actually, the yes. rejected and the, you know, Although desperate. Australia would probably uh, yeah. <laughs> have a bone to pick there. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, America um, really, I think when it's at its best, it partners with those dreamers in the world and those people trying to build a better world. China is a big nation. It has been for thousands of years. It's the world's oldest continuous civilization. Exactly. Yeah. There's a lot of inherent wisdom in China. And also inherent cultural values. It's not out of our grasp to help cr 
create a destiny where China's rise does not lead to global conflict. Mm -hmm. That requires very skillful leadership. So in a way, the choice is ours. Uh, are we going to usher in this time? And are there enough shared values? Does China have the same dream of ending poverty and so prosperity and peace that the Philippines has, the U.S. has? Can we unite on those things? And can we find a pathway? I don't know. I don't think destiny is written yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I do know that America has to play a very important role in helping the world find the stepping stones. I think the dilemma for China will be creating an innovation society requires a lot of freedom of thought. Some of it pleasing and oh, some of it displeasing. That's where I was going with it, actually, yeah. And mm -hmm. so what happens when you unleash human creativity is you get a lot of crappy creativity. You just <laughs> yeah. do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't like everything I see in American society at all. Mm -hmm. But, you know, frankly, in the end, it's not a threatening thing. Yeah. <laughs> because people gather around what they like and the economy grows in ways that it will. So we'll see what happens with China because I think as it gets more and more creative and as more and more inventions come from there and as more and more people study abroad, it's very hard to say we're going to be innovative right down this one narrow lane. Mm -hmm. it's and just be a total yeah, lane. so you know, it's it's a big country, it's hard to govern, mm -hmm. you know. It's and so lane. it's easy to judge everything from the outside, but you know, today the people of China have vast more access to information and to the world than when I first met people. It was illegal for them to even see a foreign newspaper. There was no access to information. And it's, you know, I think it's served China well. The more it opens, the more it seems to flourish.